Webb City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. today think young. Make more time for fun at home, family style. This is the life for Pepsi-Cola. Light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young. Say, Pepsi, please. So go ahead and pick the drink. And let you drink, young as you think. Yes, get the right one. The modern like one. Now it's Pepsi. For those who think young. right again. Ain't no reason, ain't no reason at all. I can't draw a gun as fast as the next fella. Hey. This is fancy, too. Ain't really nothing to it. We just... Oh, oh hello, Chester. Uh, I... <laughs> what are you doing with that gun? A gun? Mm. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing at all. I... Well, uh, the fact is, I was practicing, Mr. Dillon. You practicing with a six-gun? Well, ain't no reason I can't, are they? Well, no reason, except it seems to me you're taking it up a little late in life, aren't you? Well, there comes a time when a man has to stand up for himself. Is somebody fixing to cause you trouble, Chester? Well, he ain't exactly causing me no trouble. It's more like he's fixing to plague me to death with his everlasting bragging and carrying on. Oh, who? That Joe Sleet down at Long Branch. Joe Sleet? Joe Sleet. I... Oh, I forgot. You ain't been here for a couple of days. Ain't like that you even saw him. What about Joe Sleet? Well, he's one of them hard-talking gunfighters. That's what's about him. Oh, Chester, now... You've got more sense than to tangle with somebody like that, haven't you? Well, sure I have, Mr. Dillon. Then why are you practicing? Well, you don't hurt none, does it? I guess not. But you better be sure of one thing, Chester. What's that? That a fellow like Joe Sleet knows that you're just practicing. Oh, hello, Marshal. Alvin. Howdy, Marshal. Hi, Prony. Hello, Bryce. Get him, Doc. Oh, Matt. Matt, how it sounds like you're running for office, the way you're greeting folks. I speak when I'm spoken to, Doc. Very friendly. Very friendly. Well, sit down and have a drink. Thank you, Kitty. I've been looking for you, Doc. You've been looking, oh, not very hard, you haven't. You've been right here. Well, I figured it was a little early in the day, but uh, I guess I should have known. Was somebody sick? No, Kitty, but Judge Meadows is coming in this afternoon. He wants to talk to Doc about the wound that killed Blewett. Oh, sure, but yes, I'll go along with you. Well, there's no big rush, Doc. The stage won't be here for another hour. I have some things to do first. Oh, there he goes again. I wish he'd do his drink in some place else. Oh, oh that big one, Joe Sleep. Every time he talks to anybody, there's a fight. I want to talk to him. I'll be right back, Doc. I'll be here. Put that thing away. You ain't roped so as you have to stay. You got a right to drink without no gun spinning in my face. You want to fight me about that? That's just what you want, ain't it? Somebody to fight. All right, quiet down. Listen, Marshal. All right, Meeker, I'll handle it. I'm always trying to get somebody to fight him. 
slick drawing. I cap. said I'd handle it. Now go on, Baker. Sit down. That's right, Sonny. Go sit down, like the marshal said. <laughs> I've been hearing about you, Sleet. Yeah, there's lots has heard about me. You aren't making many friends. Ain't meant to. You're not meant to do your gunslinging in the saloon, either. I do it where it suits me. And it suits you even better if it causes trouble, is that it? I can handle trouble if it comes, Marshal. If trouble comes in Dodge, I handle it. Sleet, you remember that? Sure, Marshal. Are you ready to go, Doc? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thanks for talking to him, Matt. He's bullied around with that gun ever since he came to Dodge. I just hope it did some good. We'll see you later. Goodbye, Kitty. So long. Joe Sleet's a miserable human being, isn't he? Yeah. His kind should never get near a gun. They're not grown up enough to use one. You're right about that. It's an interesting study, Matt. About his prowess with a gun, a fellow like Sleet is childlike. He's absolutely childlike. But he's killed a lot of people just the same. Well, certainly. But what I meant... Uh, come on. Yeah, let me through. Stand back, please, folks. Stand back. Yeah. That's it, yeah. well, uh, help me turn him over. Uh, let's see. How about it, Doc? He's alive, all right. Uh, a couple of your men help me carry him up to my office. Yes, sir. I'll be up in a minute, Doc. Yeah, all right, Matt. Uh, take it easy now. Gently. Men. What happened, Kitty? It was Maker. Maker? Sleet finally said too much. He's been deviling Meeker all day. Yeah, but I never thought Meeker would draw on him. Well, Sleet wasn't expecting it either. He didn't shoot him in the back, did he? No. Sleet wasn't paying any attention, and Meeker didn't exactly warn him. He shot twice and ran out the back way. Well, do you have to go after him? Uh, if Sleet dies, yeah. Sleet's a gunman, Matt. He had it coming. Yeah, but the law isn't very choosy sometimes. Are you one of those people who are always on the go? Like you, our CBS newsmen are on the move all the time, too. Always in the direction of the biggest news developments of the day. Their own busy schedules give them a practical understanding of the value listeners put upon their services. They know you rely on them for accuracy at all times. And they have a first-hand appreciation of the importance of clarity and brevity as well. That all of these standards are kept in mind by our highly skilled, highly experienced newsmen is demonstrated over and over again in the frequent news broadcasts you hear on CBS Radio. The busier your own day the more you'll appreciate the efforts of our CBS News staff. These men offer you a direct link with history day by day. But more than that, they do their job with full regard for your busy schedule. They keep you fully informed with no waste of time, no waste of words. For accuracy, brevity, and clarity in news reports. For news at frequent intervals and at convenient times, keep tuned to CBS Radio every day. <laughs> Let you know if there's any change, Matt, but I'm sure he's going to be all right. Uh, thanks, Doc. I'm glad for Meeker's sake. Yes. Well, I'll be in the office. All right, Matt. Doc? Doc, I want to talk to you. I'm coming. Am I going to make it, Doc? You'll make it. You know, he didn't give me no chance to draw. Apparently not. He'd have never got me if 
they'd give me a chance. Yeah, just lie still now. Nobody could have outdrawed me if they'd give me a chance. Now, hold your head still. You mustn't move. Uh -huh. Seems like one bullet just grazed your temple. It's my arm. My arm that hurts, Doc. Yes, yes, What about my arm, Doc? Well, I took that bullet out, Sleep. That's all I can do. Now. It'll be all right, won't it, Doc? Well, you'll be all right. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, there won't be nothing wrong with my arm, neither, will it, Doc? It's too early to tell. It's my right arm. I wouldn't be no good without I could use my right arm. Well, we'll have to see how it heals. Well, you fix it, Doc. You can fix it. Doc? Yes, Sleep. You... You wouldn't do nothing to keep it from healing up good, would you? I mean, because it's my gun arm? No. I'm a doctor, Sleep, not a judge. No matter how much I might want to be. <laughs> Sleet. Back to see me again, huh? It ain't no better, Doc. I'm sorry, Sleet, but it isn't likely to change overnight. It's been more than a month, Doc, and I still ain't got the use of my fingers. I've told you, Sleet. Sometimes it happens that way. Well, it ain't no good without the use of my fingers, Doc. It's my gun hand. You were lucky not to lose the whole arm. I told you that from the start. Listen, Doc. If it's money, I'll find me some money so you can fix it. There are some things that money can't buy, and... One of them's a good right hand. You mean it ain't never going to get well? Huh? I can only tell you what I've told you all along. It, it just doesn't look good. It isn't just a matter of muscle and bone. It's it's the nerve. And nerves don't often come back. It's got to come back. I ain't nothing without my gun hand. <laughs> Me. He wasn't never much with his gun hand, neither. Sleet is waiting for you at your office every day. Is that right, Doc? Yes, every blessed day. It doesn't matter how often I tell him I can't do anything for him. He's still there, showing me his arm, trying to work his fingers. Well, with anyone else, you'd be sorry for him. I'm kind of sorry for Doc, having him hang around like that. Yes, indeed. I, I wish he could find something to do for my sake. I can't get in or out of my office without stepping over him. Well, I can hardly get in or out of the long branch these days either, Doc. That'll make you feel any better. Well, what's the trouble, Kitty? Oh, it's just one of the penalties of owning a business, Doc. You know that fellow I had to help out at the bar and be a general handyman? You mean that Romy fellow? Yeah, that's the one. What happened to him? Well, who knows what happened to him? He just hasn't shown up for two days. You'd think nobody else could do anything around there, except me, of course. Now, why don't you get somebody else? Nobody's down and out enough to want the job, I guess. It isn't much. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, could a man with one hand do it? One hand tied behind his back, you mean? Yeah, just about that. Well, I was thinking about sleet. Sleet? Well, maybe if he had some simple job to do, he'd snap out of it. And quit bothering you. That's huh? right. Well, no, Miss Kitty wouldn't want no fellow like him around. Oh, I don't know, Chester. I've had worse. You think it'd work, Matt? I guess it wouldn't hurt anything to try it. But there's one thing sure. Sleet isn't able to hurt anything. All right, then. If you can talk him into a dock, I'll chance it. I could sure use some help. Now, it, it just don't seem right, Miss Kitty. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Well, will you take the job for me, Chester? Oh, no, ma'am. It ain't something I'd rightly feel like doing. <laughs> Nobody feels like it. Go ahead, Doc. Talk to sleep. <laughs> Strengthen America. Character counts. 
Are you familiar with that slogan? You are if you have a Boy Scout in the family. That is the motto for this 51st anniversary year of the Boy Scouts of America. Strengthen America. Character counts. In a time of delinquent juveniles and the problems they give families and communities, such a slogan can be a rallying point for betterment. A delinquent juvenile also believes in a stronger America, an America capable of world leadership, of defense against democracy's would-be enemies. The trouble with some delinquents may be that nobody has trouble to show them how they can have roles in America's future. A logical starting point lies no farther away than the nearest Boy Scouts of America program. Youth can grow and serve the nation's needs through programs of the Boy Scouts of America. Look into scouting, an important first step towards a better life through teamwork with high purpose. Oh, I brought us our beer, Miss Kay. Miss Dillon. Thanks, Chester. Did sleep for him all right for you, Chester? Well, sure he did. There ain't nothing to pour in a glass of beer. But then you're not worried about sleep anymore, huh? Well, I wasn't ever worried about him, Mr. Dillon. Ah, uh, you were a couple of weeks ago, Chester. Don't deny it. Oh, well, that was before he changed into a changed man, you might say. You figure he's changed then, huh? Well, sure he is. Anybody can see that. Ain't that so, Miss Kitty? We are, Chester. You're right. It's almost as if that gun had been a part of him, that. Without it, he seems to have lost part of his whole makeup. Does he ever talk about it? Oh, he never talks about anything. Not even the doc, huh? Doc says Sleet won't even speak when he's passing him on the street. Well, I guess Doc can do without all the talk he used to get from him. Yeah, I guess he can. Yeah, it's a funny thing, Amy, Mr. Dillon. How far can change. Sleet always used to like to be around where the crowd was. Now nobody don't never see him. That's right. He leaves here as soon as his chores are done. Nobody knows where he stays. Must be out of town somewhere. I see him walking out there most every night. You suppose all men had calmed down like that if there were no guns? I don't know, Kitty, but it sure saved me a lot of trouble. Yeah. Saved women a lot of worry. Well, don't hold your breath, Kitty. I think we'll be hanging on to our guns for a while. And women will go right on worrying. What's the matter, Chester? Somebody chasing you? What? No, sir. The door just slipped out of my hand. That's all that happened. You nearly broke it off. Where you been? I seen him a horse down at the liver stable. Oh? Uh-huh. He's got that lame leg and all. Oh, did you get him fixed up? Oh, well, yes, sir. I think it did. Moss is going to keep an eye on him. Oh, that's good. He's worth taking care of. Oh, yes, sir. He is. Say, you know who I seen down there at the stable? Uh, no. Who did you see down there at the stable, Chester? That fellow Meeker, Mr. Dillon. You know, the one that shot Joe Sleet? He just rode into town. But did he say where he was heading? No, sir, he didn't. I don't think it'd be hard to find him, though. How's that? But he said he'd been on the trail all day, and he was packing around to awful thirds. All right, come on, Chester. Uh, yes, sir. Where, where are we going? Just come on. Bartender, whiskey. Yeah, I want some whiskey. <laughs> well, Joe Sleep. They told me you was working here. I wanted to see for myself. You remember me, Sleep? Sure, you gotta remember me. I'm the one that put you back at that bar. Best job of work I ever done, too. Fixing so you couldn't shoot no more. What's the matter, Sleep? Can't you talk neither? <laughs> if I fixed it so you couldn't talk neither, I'd done better than I thought for. Sleep? No, Sleep, wait. All right, put that gun down, Sleep. 
You can have it, Marshal. Meeker's dead, Mr. Dillon. He's dead. And I shot him. Yeah, you did. I shot him with my left hand, Marshal. I've been practicing up. Every night I've been practicing up. I taught myself good, didn't I, Marshal? Seems like it. No man could live that shot me down, Marshal. He should have known that. He found out. Guess it proves I'm still a top gun, don't it, Marshal? Even with my left hand. After all that practicing, proves it, don't it? I don't know about that, Sleep. But it proves one thing for sure. What's that? That you're a man to be tried for murder. Let's go. Hi, this is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. Hi, this is Dennis James to explain why Kellogg's Way is the reliable way to get the effectiveness you want from Bran with just half a cup a day. The Kellogg's All Bran is the real Battle Creek formula, the one that millions of people depend on. And they depend on it because Kellogg's All Bran contains more vital Bran bulk to help you keep regular. It's low in calories, and it's mighty pleasant eating, too. Kellogg's All Bran comes in crisp, toasted shreds that have a wholesome Bran muffin taste. I think you'll like it. So be sure you remember... For the effectiveness you want from Bran, get reliable Kellogg's All Bran. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Bran. Reliability. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. George Walsh, inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story of the western frontier, when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.